These results suggest that finasteride significantly reduces the risk of developing prostate cancer, but the malignant degree of prostate cancer might be increased by finasteride use. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907.com, on code Russo. 1907wire.com, can't talk today. And intelligent elephant argon, here are your noises. All right, I am going to be commenting on John Bravo getting prostate cancer. I'm going to be reacting, and I think sadly this will be probably one of my last finasteride videos. But I wanted to showcase one study for everyone on finasteride to read, as well as the people who don't like it. Remember, this drug, I don't want it to get banned, I don't think it'll get banned, but I just wanted to showcase that when I first gathered my knowledge. I thought finasteride would be one of the greatest ways to combat prostate cancer by reducing the overall total amount of DHT in the body, thus resulting in less prostate stimulation, shrinking prostate, keeping your prostate the most healthy. That's again, my original thoughts when it comes to this prostate cancer data. However, I've been educated over these past year of being castrated and seeing that finasteride in theory causes epigenetic changes to the androgen receptors that could result in extreme exacerbated cancer randomly. And that seems to be what John is sadly experiencing. And I seriously hope he beats this. I know he's going to get a specialist. John Bravo is the man and I want to see him battle out of this. I don't really think this is even a hard battle for John to win as far as the man John is. And when I did the blood test, my PSA level came back and it was 6.1. And for reference, you know, all my previous tests for the last 10 years, it's been less than 0 0.5. And that level 6.1 abnormally high like that is usually a level that a 90 year old man would have. It means the prostate is enlarged and there is like a 30 the 40% chance at that level that you may have prostate cancer. Good, before I recommend it to any of my viewers. And when I did the blood test, my PSA level came back and it was 6.1. And for reference, you know, all my previous tests for the last 10 years, it's been less than 0 0.5. And that level 6.1 abnormally high. For example, I have like not even got my PSA above two getting tests done on extreme amounts of androgens. So it's like, yeah, your prostate can be inflamed, abnormally enlarged, but this is pretty significantly extreme right off the bat. And it's out of the blue. John has not had any issues. John has been on top of his blood work for years. I always see John preaching extremely low dosages of HRT, actually making fun of everyone, juicing their brains out. And this really showcases that this prostate cancer just boom happened. I like that. It's usually a level that a 90 year old man would have. It means the prostate is enlarged and there is like a 30, the 40% chance at that level that you may have prostate cancer. And that is something that I was reflecting on the past week until I found out exactly what was going on. So those four days, you know, I kept on thinking, I'm like, you know, I haven't done what I want to do in life yet. I haven't accomplished the things that I'm supposed to accomplish. I feel like I'm just getting started. I left my old career for this one and i'm just starting to do this and there's so much i want to do before i go and thinking about all those things you know thinking about my family and i didn't tell them you know i didn't tell my family anything uh because i was worried about that's how i was i didn't tell my family 
even though obviously I came out on the internet, but the severity of what I was battling till about two or three months after knowing how bad it was. So I can relate to John being in shell shock. Obviously prostate cancer is extreme. For those who don't know, like you will not be able to ejaculate, pee normally, peeing will burn. You'll just constantly know something is wrong with you 24 seven. This needs to be treated immediately and combated. There are really great specialists in the United States that John has access to and I hope he's contacted them immediately. This is out of my wheelhouse to give any advice on. But I did want to feature the medical data. So the medical data that I have, which I will link below, is association with finasteride and prostate cancer. So I've already prefaced at the beginning of this video that I would assume finasteride, dutasteride would be some of the best drugs to combat an enlarged prostate. My grandfather currently takes finasteride to combat prostate hyperplasia. However, this medical data, as well as people around the world who have commented saying, I was on finasteride, I got off finasteride because I didn't know the risk for prostate cancer. This meta-analysis breaks it down. Very easy to read if you go all the way to the bottom and just simply read the conclusion by the researchers. In summary, the meta-analysis results in this paper to add evidence of an association between finasteride use and prostate cancer. These results suggest that finasteride significantly reduces the risk of developing prostate cancer, but the malignant degree of prostate cancer might be increased by finasteride use. However, studies with larger sample sizes are needed to further conclude the correlation between finasteride and prostate cancer. Here's my two cents bro science opinion on this is that John Bravo had zero issues with finasteride forever. John Bravo never used extreme amounts of TRT. I don't think John Bravo has prostate cancer that runs in his family. He has been testing his blood work for years with no enlargement of his prostate. His prostate's probably more than healthy when finasteride is operating right. In my opinion, there was some RNA change to the AR that happened, thus resulting in an over multiplication or something under multiplication. I don't know, some sort of change happened because he's blocking 5AR1 systemic this resulted in the prostate freaking out and becoming cancerous. That's my two cents. That's what the data suggests. We have this drug that's marketed to shrink the prostate, super, super well known to do it correctly drop PSA level insane. However, we have this opposite side of the boat. Basically, the guys who roll dice and get snake eyes that state, oh, I didn't have prostate cancer forever, but randomly I was hit by a truck with like this vicious prostate cancer that could be linked to the finasteride, in my opinion, more than all the other environmental factors, because John Bravo is not a guy that abuses his health with PEDs. He doesn't need to. He's a looks maxer. He looks like half his age. His hairline's immaculate, and I don't think he was abusing shit tons of androgens behind the scenes at all. You know, I think he was very on top of his health, and this came out of nowhere, and I do really point the finger at suspecting that finasteride may have played a significant role in that due to its ability to block 5AR1, which is needed for allopregnanolone conversion locally, thus resulting in maybe like John had a mood switch one day and boom, that RNA switch happened under stress. And now he's in this weird state and he has to battle out of it. That's why finasteride needs to be completely discussed before you take it. I'm just giving you the education on this data. Nobody wants to see that this drug go away. I just want to know like, okay, everyone knows the risk they're playing with when they're scrolling through Instagram. They see a hymns ad. Oh, I can keep my hair. Boom. Add to cart. You're messing around with one of the most, in my opinion, serious pharmacological interventions you can do, period, for vanity biohacking. It's the most effective at stopping hair loss, but normally with more power comes more price. And I really respect John for coming out into the public eye being like, look, this is what I'm dealing with. He's not hiding it. He wants to warn people. He wants to showcase his battle and journey. And I'm here to follow along. But if you're on Finasteride, I highly suggest you read that meta-analysis and watch John's full video. I will see you guys in my next one.